Well, let's get into an interesting conversation that is sort of linked to the housing issue where a lot of people are seeking financial products in the market. Let me now bring in George Miner, who is the Managing Director for Caritas Microfinance. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for having me in your show today. Well, um, <coughs> of course, uh, there's a lot of interest now that you're seeing Kenyans are becoming more financial uh, literate and there's a lot of financial sector deepening. From where you sit, um, what are the trends looking like in terms of absorption of credit and uh, generally the uptake of financial products in the market? Um, indeed, you're you, you right. The absorption and um, the financial inclusion is becoming a very key in this country. And one of the things that has really enhanced that is the use of technology. Mm -hmm. You'll agree with me that with the mobile phone penetration, which currently stands at around 80%, then a lot of people who are previously ma marginalized mm -hmm. have now come into the loop. They are mm -hmm. able to save, they are able to borrow. And indeed, there is, the penetration has been growing deeper. All right. on a daily basis. And um, in case uh, our viewers are wondering, uh, of course, uh, Caritas Microfinance is a Catholic-based um, institu uh, financial institution. And uh, recently, you were receiving an, a license, if I'm not wrong, from CBK. And uh, just walk us through what this means for the mm. microfinance institution moving forward. All right. Uh, Caritas Microfinance Bank is uh, owned by the Archdiocese of Nairobi Catholic. However, having been regulated by the Central Bank of Kenya, yeah. we are not restricted in serving only the Catholic faithfuls. Mm -hmm. They just happen to be, you know, the investors. We have a nationwide license, and we are we shall be serving everybody across mm -hmm. across the, 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 the country. Yeah. We received our license uh, in 2015, so we've been operating now for the last one and a half years. Mm -hmm. And indeed, within that particular period, we have experience great strides and growth. We currently have um, about 10,000 accounts that have been opened with the bank, mm -hmm. managed to mobilize about 400 million Kenya shillings in savings, and we've been able to disburse over 200 million. So the trajectory looks good. All right. Speaking about the trajectory, of course, um, one would be keen to find out what has been driving the growth in the loan book as well as the deposits. As you, you, you rightly mentioned, the fact that we are associated with the church already gives us a very prime uh, target market mm -hmm. because the, the goodwill we have received from, from the church has been quite encouraging. Yeah. And we are seeing institutions opening as well as the, the individuals. Mm -hmm. that, that has been very, very helpful. Right. Secondly, it's also important to note that uh, the Catholic Church has also played a very significant role in this country mm -hmm. in terms of the schools, in terms of the hospitals. And so we are bringing credibility into the market. People are, uh, are saying this is a bank we can be able to trust in, the bank that you can be able you know, to have confidence in. If I put my money, it will be there for, for a long while. All right. Speaking about trust and confidence, the financial sector in Kenya has been um, experiencing some form of turbulence now that we saw an, uh, three major banks being put under receivership. And um, it shows a consumer who is a bit concerned about where they put their money. Perhaps as a bank, have you felt the perception issues around consumers and uh, how can banks better align themselves to ensure they instill confidence in their consumers? I think one of the things that also has also happened is that even as the consumer gets aware, the, the, the regulator, the Central Bank of Kenya, has also played a very key, key role. We are seeing now a lot of vigilance from CBK. There's a lot of reporting that is being done. And indeed, now that, that puts a lot of pressure on the banks to be able then to be compliant mm -hmm. and to, to keep their, their books in order. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to say that as much as the consumer is getting aware, the, the regulator also has played a very key role. All right. And as far as we are concerned, I, as I said earlier on, mm -hmm. the, the confidence we have received mm -hmm. uh, has a lot to, to play with, again, who, who is behind the bank. All right. And uh, as you are speaking about Caritas and uh, the outlook for Caritas, perhaps um, are we expecting some major expansion plans um, in this day and age where we are seeing there are lot of, lots of opportunities across counties for financial institutions to have a presence in? We are coming into the market at a time when technology is actually the one that is dominating the financial sector. And uh, part of our strategy is indeed to leverage a lot on technology. 
the brick and mortar, yes, we are going to be opening a few branches as per a strategic plan, we should be having about 12 to 15 brick and mortar branches. But in terms of uh, transactions, mm -hmm. we want our customers to be able to transact with the bank without necessarily coming to the banking hall. Mm -hmm. So about 80% of our transactions, we want them to be based on, on, on technology. All that right. provides the convenience that the customer needs, the efficiency, mm -hmm. and definitely it lowers our cost. All right. So finally, what sort of other products is the bank looking to uh, release in the market where we have a very um, intelligent consumer who is very exposed and would like to see um, sophistic sophistication really mm. in some of the products being rolled out? Sophistication may not be the key, Abina. Mm. My, my, my take is the customer wants convenience. Mm. And so the, the, the mobile loan <coughs> is, is our next loan that we are, is our next product that we're going to be rolling out in the next few, few weeks. The, the testing has already been done, and that offers a lot of uh, convenience to our customers. All right. The statistics are showing that uh, the peak time, actually for borrowing from the mobile loans, you'll be amazed, it's at night. So you can see we can be able then to do our business both during the day and, and at night. Mm -hmm. So that is the space that our customers should be looking for. All right. Yeah. Perhaps your parting shot around what should you expect of Caritas in the next uh, financial year? Caritas Microfinance Bank is the next big thing. If you look at Uganda just across uh, our neighboring country, mm -hmm. the Centenary Bank is the largest in Uganda mm -hmm. in terms of asset and, uh, and also in terms of the, the branch ne network. Mm -hmm. So we want to emulate what Centenary Bank has done in All Uganda right. All right. so that we can be able to do it here in Kenya. So this is the next big thing. Many thanks. We'll be watching this space. Thank you, Abina. All right. That has been George Miner, who is the Chief Executive Officer for Caritas Microfinance Bank. Just talking to us on some of the insights that uh, the banking sector is going through. He is quite optimistic that the banks of the future will have to leverage on technology to remain relevant as well as grow their numbers. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'll be speaking to Nitin Shah, who is the Managing Director for Sarit Center. I know Sarit Center does evoke a lots and lots of emotions this is KTN Business Today. We'll be having that interesting conversation after this break. <laughs>